What does it really mean to be a mathematician? Is it a title you earn with a degree? Or is it something deeper, something more personal and philosophical? The definition might seem simple at first. A mathematician is someone who does mathematics. But as soon as you start asking what that means, things start to get a little complicated. Some people say you need formal credentials, at least a bachelor's, maybe a master's, and ideally a PhD. In that view, you are not considered a mathematician unless you studied the subject at a very high academic level, or maybe even contributed original research to the field. From a different perspective, though, the title shouldn't depend on a piece of paper. Take mathematicians like Ramanujan, someone who is largely self-taught but who made significant contributions in number theory, or Ada Lovelace with computing, or George and Mary Boole, or Oliver Heaviside, or Benjamin Banneker, and the list goes on. So if your mind works mathematically and you're working with mathematical ideas, even if it's on your own, aren't you considered a mathematician? There's also a more practical work-based definition. Maybe a mathematician is just someone who uses math professionally. People like data scientists, statisticians, financial analysts, and engineers. So the people whose daily work involves applying mathematical thinking. But this definition can be both too broad or too narrow. Too broad because someone using Excel formulas every day isn't necessarily thinking about mathematical theory and expanding mathematics in general. But also too narrow because someone can be exploring deeply mathematical ideas in their spare time, but they are not being paid for it. Does being a mathematician require money or a job or just the mindset? Okay, well, let's assume that it's just the mindset. But then in that case, do you also have to make original contributions to the field? Because in academia, that's pretty much the standard. By including this in our definition, we then have to exclude a huge number of math teachers, communicators, and enthusiasts who are not publishing in journals, but are doing the essential work of spreading and deepening the love for the subject. Take someone who spends their life tutoring high school students in trigonometry, or someone who makes explainer math videos online, <clears throat> like us. Are they then not mathematicians? Because of all these nuances, maybe the question isn't about credentials or career paths, but about identity. Maybe before answering whether you are a mathematician or not, you should ask yourself, do I approach the world with a mathematical lens, asking questions, looking for patterns, and exploring structures? Do you find joy in solving problems, in playing with numbers, or with abstract ideas? Do you try to expand your knowledge? Then maybe, just maybe, that in itself is enough. Actually, nobody owns the title of mathematician, and there is no central authority that makes you one. Mathematicians are able to peer review each other's work, and they can do so without having to have any title assigned to them, just out of pure love for the subject. Okay, let's have Sophia tell you guys about some examples. Let's take Ramanujan, for example. He had almost no formal training in mathematics, but because of his obsession and intuitive brilliance, he developed results in number theory that were so deep and surprising that they still fascinate mathematicians even today. And he wasn't validated by academia until much later, when G. H. Hardy recognized his genius and brought him to Cambridge. Imagine if Hardy hadn't taken him seriously. Would history have remembered Ramanujan at all? Does that mean he wouldn't have been considered a mathematician? Or take George Green. He was almost entirely self-taught, and received formal schooling only between the ages of 8 and 9. He wrote a paper in 1828 that introduced what we now call Green's theorem. It's a foundational result in vector calculus that physicists and engineers still use. He published it privately and was mostly ignored in his lifetime. But today, his name is used in almost every undergraduate math curriculum. Yet, he had almost no formal training, no academic title, but just ideas. There's also George and Mary Boole a married couple, both of whom were self-taught mathematicians. George ended up actually becoming the first math professor of Queen's College Cork in Ireland. Again, despite being self-taught. And Mary wanted to change math education by making it more accessible in her writings. There are many more others like them, but the point remains the same. Now let's take some people who don't formally contribute to the field. Math YouTubers or independent bloggers who explain abstract algebra, topology, or any other math field with incredible clarity. Sometimes, and might I say often, they do it better than a university lecturer would. 
they're doing the hard work of understanding and communicating complex ideas. And by doing so, they're participating in the math community overall. And then there are the modern examples, the amateur mathematicians on the internet, the kind of people who spend hours on Math Stack Exchange or Reddit's math, writing up full proofs, finding typos in published work, and solving problems for fun. Some of these users have no formal degrees or have degrees in completely different fields, but their posts are sometimes so rigorous, so precise, and so insightful that they could pass for university lecture notes. If someone dedicates their evenings to solving abstract problems and then sharing this information with the world, how is that person not a mathematician? These are people who might never publish a paper, might never go viral, or might never speak at a conference, but they keep on returning to math every day, not because they want recognition, but because there's an itch in their brain that they just want to scratch. They are, in every meaningful sense, doing math. And if doing math is what makes someone a mathematician, how can we possibly exclude them? So I'll ask you, are you a mathematician? And what do you think defines a mathematician? Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love this one. See you guys there.